the idea is just to keep the smell away. Not, it's not going to protect you against anything, at least of all a virus. Um, so, so they got the interview they wanted, you know, and promoted the hysteria. Um, and I kind of kick myself now because um, it's simply not true. Any of it is not true. So um, very soon uh, into 2020, um, human directors began panicking. You know, the death rate wasn't there, though. There was no increased death rate that we were seeing deceased that were deliberately labelled with COVID, but there wasn't any increase in numbers at all, and that was across the board, um, as far as I was aware. Certainly every funeral director I spoke to and every mortuary I went into weren't seeing pandemic numbers. We were seeing people that were labelled with COVID, but um, you know how deadly was that? I really can't tell you. So um, I had a family come and see me who'd lost a young child, um, and the child was six, uh, and a cancer sufferer. So, so totally not related. Um, basically, they wanted to see their little girl, and this was at a time when other funeral directors were taking um, body bags and coffins to the hospital and sealing people straight in those body bags and coffins there and then. There was no dressing, no, no viewings, nothing like that, because they could do it because of COVID, you know? Um, I felt that that wasn't fair to those people that had lost someone via a Zoom call or standing there in a hazmat suit, you know, that, that just isn't fair, isn't fair. So I washed the dress of this little girl and, and gave the family time to see their, their, their child um, as any decent human would. And I kind of came to the conclusion then, you know, my job is to look after people. And if that means that I, I fall over in the process of doing that, so be it. And I've washed and dressed everyone the whole way through COVID regardless of whether there have been COVID um, diagnosis or not. Mate, okay. going funny that you haven't died of COVID, brother. Well, not only that, but my wife's helped me, uh, and uh, I've also got an embalmer who works with me full-time, who's 55, he's a heart attack survivor, 10 years now, um, and he's, he's, you know, none of us have had a day off, we're all perfectly healthy. And they've streamlined the process now where a doctor's not in attendance at death, the police are not in attendance for death, and Whoever is on the scene um, rings the doctor. The doctor say, OK, if you're sure they're dead, ring the undertaker. We go straight out. And I was picking these people up, still warm, you know. So, so um, it wasn't like they were sitting in refrigeration or cold storage for a week and any virus they might have had to, had disappeared. You know, if they were COVID patients and they were infectious, I'm sure I would have I would have got it because I have not worn a mask the whole time. Um, mm. Neither was my wife, neither was my embalmer. So... So what are you seeing with numbers now? So, um, well, kind of rewinding back to 2020, in, in uh, March and April, we, we saw a brief spike for about two weeks, two and a half weeks, maybe three weeks, where unusually the phone started ringing. Um, and as a society, we're very good at getting people to pass away in hospital. Um, uh, and I would say if I have 10 collections uh, of deceased, eight of them would be hospital removals. One of them would be from a care home, and one of them would be either a residential address where someone's gone home to die, or a hospice where people go to die for palliative care. And we suddenly had an announcement on the TV from government that um, they were going to try and protect the most vulnerable in, in care homes, and that these care homes um, w would be um, the places that were hit the hardest, which I kind of at the time thought was really strange, because I don't understand how a virus can attack attack a specific